welcome back buddies on another video on deadlock so till now we see that what is deadlock and the four conditions which are responsible for this deadlock and we also see here two graphical methods resource allocation graph and wait for graph so i think you have a basic knowledge of what is deadlock right so we can say that uh, this deadlock is something like an infection for our computer system and we are these powerful white cells and our job is to protect our system from this infection called deadlock oh that's cool right okay so to protect our system from this deadlock there are lots of methods are available and these methods are generally divided into three major categories these categories are deadlock avoidance deadlock prevention and third one is deadlock detection and recovery so instead of directly jumping to this deadlock prevention uh, let's give you a basic overview of what is three different techniques first of all let's try to understand it from its name the first one is deadlock prevention second one is deadlock avoidance okay so these uh, both techniques are look similar right because whatever the method it is it will prevent or avoid our system to goes into the deadlock while this is deadlock detection and recovery so here first of all our system is go into the deadlock then this method will detect it and then it will apply a recovery steps and recover our system from the deadlock so there is a slight difference right that okay here it will prevent or uh, avoid it it means here at least uh, we have a surety that okay our system will never goes into the deadlock while here we can say that okay our system is goes into the deadlock but no worries this method will recover it from the deadlock now what's the big deal that is uh, after all here we will get rid of this deadlock right but no there is a big disadvantage here in this deadlock detection and recovery suppose uh, there are two processes are currently running into our system and the execution time of one of the process is of 5 hours now suppose that system or that process will work for 4 hours and 59 minutes and after that our system is goes into the deadlock so now what happened deadlock detection and recovery steps is applied and it will recover our system from the deadlock so we will get rid of this deadlock but now after recovery we need to start a whole process from the scratch and again need to wait for five hours but still there is a possibility that again might be our system goes into the deadlock so again we need to wait for five hours again it will go into the deadlock again we need to uh, wait for five hours again the system may need uh, goes into the deadlock again we need to uh, wait for five hours so there is a big disadvantage of this deadlock detection and recovery technique so if we see from this point of view deadlock prevention and avoidance technique is better than deadlock detection and recovery now let's see this all three techniques one by one so first is deadlock prevention the basic funda behind this deadlock prevention technique is that it will put a restriction on the way the process will request for the resource it means that suppose a one process wants to access a particular resource and if that request accessing that resource will leads the system to the deadlock then this deadlock prevention technique will never allows that particular process to send a resource access request for example here 
प्रोसेस पी वन ऑलरेडी होल्डिंग रिसोर्स आर वन एंड प्रोसेस पी टू ऑलरेडी होल्डिंग रिसोर्स आर टू एंड ऑलरेडी सेंड अ रिक्वेस्ट टू एक्सिस रिसोर्स आर वन नाउ सपोज प्रोसेस पी वन वॉन्ट्स टू एक्सिस रिसोर्स आर टू बट इफ प्रोसेस पी टू विल सेंड अ रिक्वेस्ट टू एक्सिस रिसोर्स आर टू इट विल लीड्स द सिस्टम टू डू दैट लॉक सो दैट लॉक प्रिवेंशन टेक्निक नेवर अलाउज प्रोसेस पी वन to even send a request to access resource r2 so this is the basic funda behind this deadlock prevention technique now you already know that if we want to get rid of this deadlock then we need to break the any of the one condition which is mutual exclusion hold and wait non preemptive and circular wait so here we take this rule of breaking any of the one condition and we also follow this uh, basic funda of deadlock prevention technique hence we are trying to develop some method so that if any of the process wants to access a particular resource and it will send a request and if that request will may leads the system to the mutual exclusion or either hold and wait or either non preemptive or either circular wait then we never allow that particular process to send a request right so let's try to develop some method which always break this mutual exclusion method but it is not possible to break mutual exclusion every time why because uh, some of the resources in uh, the computer are by nature mutual exclusive for example printer now two processes can never access printer at a same time so every time breaking mutual exclusion is not working so we cannot develop any deadlock prevention method which break this mutual exclusion method so here it is not possible so now let's try to develop some method which break this hold and wait condition now hold uh, breaking this hold and wait condition in uh, uh, deadlock prevention is easiest one right why because uh, our main funda is to put restriction on the request right so if we want to break this hold and wait condition the only condition is that it never already holding some resource so here process p1 already holding resource r1 and it wants to send a resource r2 so here uh, we never allows process p2 to send a request a resource r2 so first we tell that okay process p1 you first need to release resource r1 if you release resource r1 then there is that i will allows you to send a request to access resource r2 but here this solution may not always works why because it might be possible that uh, uh, suppose process p1 cannot execute without resource r1 so this solution may not work so we need to find out some other solution right so other solution to avoid this hold and wait condition is that at the beginning of the process we acquire all the logs if any of the resource is not available and if we cannot get its lock then we will release all the locks and wait until we found all the locks for example at the beginning we said that okay that a process p1 how many resources are required by this process p1 okay it requires r1 and r2 then we check that okay if that both are free if both are free then we can get this uh, lock and we can tell that okay process uh, p1 
you can start your execution but suppose at the beginning we find that r1 is free then we acquire its lock but we found that r2 is not free then we cannot get its lock so first we release the lock of r1 and tell the to the particular uh, to that process p1 that okay process p1 you need to wait until you found both the logs r1 and r2 so this is the perfect solution of breaking hold and wait condition using the main funda of deadlock prevention technique but there is a one disadvantage here also what is the disadvantage now let's see suppose there are two processes whose execution time is 10 minutes and both requires 10 resources this both processes are p1 and p2 here there are some constraints are given that process p1 and p2 both requires only one shared resources which is printer all other nine resources which are required by p1 and p2 are different now what other constraints given is that these nine resources these both nine resources are required at a starting nine minute of time and at a starting at and last one minute process p2 requires printer as well as process p1 requires printer at last one minute so if we see that uh, accessing time of printer by process p1 is 12:41 if it starts in at 12:32 and if it start this process start at 12:30 it access printer at 12:39 and this both process completes is execution at 12:42 but as per this holden wait condition second solution this process p2 starts at 12:30 so at the starting at the beginning it checks that okay all that 10 res required resources are free or not and it will find that okay all are free so it will acquire all that logs and it will starts its execution but at the starting time it means at 12:32 p2 finds that oh, uh, p1 finds that nine resources are free but a uh, one resource printer is not free so it cannot starts its execution and it release this resources lock and it will wait or printer to release and at 12:40 printer is released and this process p1 starts its execution at 12:40 instead of 12:32 and completes this process at 12:50 instead of 12:42 so here as per this solution in this example it increase a waiting time of process p1 as well as here one another disadvantage is a poor utilization of resource here printer is used by this both process only for 2 minutes but it is hold by this both process for 80 minutes so here there is a poor utilization of the resources so we find out the solution to breaking this hold and wait condition using this deadlock prevention technique but there is a disadvantages of 
poor utilization of resources and it increased the waiting time of the process. Okay, so that's it for today's lecture. We will complete non preemptive and circular weight condition breaking using deadlock prevention approach in next lecture. So if you have any queries, here is my contact detail. You can WhatsApp me, you can message me on Quora or you can mail me on uh, vishaltang999 at the rate gmail.com. Okay, so that's it. Bye-bye, take care and don't forget to subscribe.